Hail and well met, fellow Amnestre. Welcome to Season 1, Episode 10 of the Amnestre Vlog. As you can see, I'm lounging here in Broken Isles, Dalaran, and today I want to tell you about something I've been working on here in recent weeks, and that is Legion Class Mounts. You may recall in Episode 1 of True North, uh, Northereal and I ranked Legion an S tier WoW expansion and one of the things that made it superior was the class order hall which was intertwined with artifact weapons to create narrative content and a power fantasy that was unique to each class. Well artifacts are now irrelevant which was a major design misstep in my opinion but there's still plenty of reason to go back to that Legion content, like the premium mounts that are unique to each class. And that's one of the things that makes Legion an S-tier expansion. So what are we talking about here? I want to start with a, a showcase, a little runway walk of the best and the worst looking mounts before I talk about how to obtain them. So WoW has 13 classes. Only 12 have Legion mount class mounts. Uh, evokers weren't around during Legion, but even so, they're too cool for school since they can fly without needing a mount. So of the 12 mounts, and this is strictly my opinion, you're free to form your own, only seven or eight are super cool, and the other four or five aren't worth spending a lot of effort on. So the ones that I'm not bothering with are this dorky priest owl thingy. I mean, I just don't know what to say. Then there's this clumsy looking druid owl thingy. I mean, the regular travel forms in their racial variants, even the classic baseline night elf, but especially newer races like the High Mountain Tauren and the Zandalari Troll are way cooler than the lackluster Legion Druid flight form. So moving on, the Paladin Armored Horse is kind of meh. I mean, wow, yet another Armored Horse. How creative, Blizz. So like the Druid travel forms, there are Pally mounts specific to each race, and many of the racial mounts are, are better than the Legion class mount. Here's the classic baseline Human Paladin mount. Compare that to the Lightforge Drenai Paladin mount. And especially the Zandalari Troll mount, much more impressive than the Legion Paladin mount. Next. The warrior mount is okay, kind of lackluster. Yet another dragon mount, plenty of those in the game. Plus it really doesn't say warrior like some of the other class mounts do. The death knight also has a skeletal dragon mount. Another dragon mount. It's maybe the only one of these bottom five that might be worth taking the time to acquire, in my opinion. Okay, enough whining. So what are the top seven Legion class mounts? Without further ado, coming in at number seven, Monk, Bon Lu, Grandmaster's Companion. This is not my favorite mount, but I like the bright colors and, and all the doodads. It certainly captures the spirit of Pandaria, so it's great, especially for Pandaran monks. 
There is no color variant for this mount. At number six, Mage, the Archmage's prismatic disc. This mount has a, a really cool model, especially if you compare it to some of the other flying disc mounts, which have much simpler models. My one complaint is it's really small. You can't really see it, so it doesn't make a huge impression. I kind of wish they had gone with like a magic carpet or a flying book, but the disc is still awesome. Its color varies by the spec you're in when you mount it. Purple for arcane, as you've seen. Orange for fire. And ice blue for frost. Number five. Demon Hunter, the Slayer's Fell Broken Shrieker. That helmet is kind of a little odd, but whatever. This mount definitely says Demon Hunter loud and clear. Great for class fantasy. There is no color variant for this mount. Number four, Hunter, the Hunt Master's Wolf Hawk. This comes in three colors. All kind of subtle earth tones, greenish, bluish, and orangish. Keep in mind that all of these class mounts double as ground and flying mounts. Most of them look a lot better either as flying mounts or as ground mounts. This one looks great in both cases, either flying or grounded. Another thing to point out is that by completing the quest line to acquire this mount you also acquire the ability to tame beasts of the wolf hawk type which enables you to do silly stuff like this number three warlock the nether lord's wrath steed I suppose you could say for this mount what I said about the Pally class mount. Yet another infernal horse? But this is one of the cooler mounts of this type. It comes in three colors. The default is green. You can buy the fiery orange version from a vendor in the class hall for 1,000 order resources. The purple version is harder to get. You have to camp a demon boss in the Broken Shore that's on a very long spawn timer. Some say it's once a day, so buckle in for the long haul. I'm showing you the location here. Number two, Rogue, the Shadow Blade's Omen. This mount is so cool, I remember uh, being very jealous of Northuriel when she got hers. Definitely plays into the dark, shadowy class fantasy of the Rogue class. Uh, this comes in four color variants, all of which are fairly subtle. In addition to the baseline, there's a greenish, reddish and blackish variant. You can buy the latter three variants from a vendor in your class hall for a thousand order resources each. I'll talk about this a little more later but this is one mount that has a very nasty bottleneck to acquire even at max level but more on that later. And finally at number one the Shaman class mount, the Farseer's Raging Tempest. In my opinion, this, this is the coolest mount by a mile. I mean, look at that thing! Plus, it screams Shaman with that, that little 
collar thing you're standing on to tame this poor elemental being. It's kind of sad in a way, but let's all cling to the belief that they are willing participants in the subjugation. Like the mage class mount, the color of this mount varies by the spec you're in when you mount. Orange for elemental, white for enhancement, and greenish for restoration. Okay, before I get into a walkthrough of how to get your class mount, some quick facts and answer to basic questions, I want to show you some slides, but hmm, there's no such thing as PowerPoint in World of Warcraft, so I'm going to have to improvise here. Okay, I found this generic Night Elf spell in my spellbook. Uh, it's called Monopoint. Let's see. There we go. Question one. What do I have to do to get the mount? The first thing you need to do is open up Legion content, that goes without saying, which leads you directly to your class order hall, which is different for each class. Chances are, if you already have a Legion Hearthstone, you've already done this, though they did just convert that stone to a toy, so that's not always an accurate indicator. Then you need to complete the class campaign. This is the most time-consuming piece of this. It's about 50 quests, so it's a long haul. The specific quests are unique to each class, but the basic structure of the quest line is the same across all classes. Then you need to complete a brief quest chain that starts in the Broken Shore to obtain a mission table follower. And there's a major caveat here. If you have not completed the Broken Shore intro quest line, you must do so first. But after that, and that, this is very important, there is a skip for all subsequent characters, and I'll show that to you a little bit later. Once you've completed the uh, Broken Shore follower quest chain, you must complete another brief quest chain, or sometimes it's only a single quest, to obtain your mount. So that's a brief overview. Question two, how long does it take? I've never actually timed myself, but it would be possible to complete it in a single day if you really applied yourself. There are several meta quests, however, that create serious bottlenecks to the process. I mean, there are several quests that ask you to, for instance, complete 10 world quests or complete five mission table missions. It's a major bottleneck, and as a result, I usually spread this process out over two or three days. Question three, how many quests are we talking about? Get ready for some maths. I counted all the quests for each class, and here's what I found. For the class campaign, the average number of quests is 48.5. For the Broken Shore follower quest line, the average number of quests is 11.9. And then for the concluding class mount quest, the average is 3.8 quests. Some classes like the Demon Hunter, Shaman, and Rogue only have a single quest for that last phase, but others like the Paladin and the Warlock have up to seven quests to finally get them out. So that is a total average of 64.2 quests per class, with Hunters having the longest haul at 75, sucks to be you, and Warriors having the fewest at 52. Question four, what level do I need to be? The class campaign quests are level 45 quests, uh, so they're trivial for max level characters. I personally think it would be fun to do the class campaign at level, uh, meaning 45 plus using chromie time, on at least one character if you can. The stories are mostly good and they uh, add a lot to your class fantasy. Question five, who can use the mounts? Any character of the same class. You don't have to do this on every character. Uh, for example, if you acquire the Shadow Blades Omen on a level 70 Worgen Rogue, you can immediately use it on your level 20 Vulpera Rogue on the Horde side. I know this because I've done it. 
Of course, you can't actually use the mounts as a ground mount until level 10, and then as a flying mount until level 30. And remember once again, all of these mounts are both ground mounts and flying mounts. So let's do a walkthrough, starting with some tools that you will need or that will be very helpful to you. First, if level 45 quests are gray for you, make sure you turn on tracking for trivial quests. I had it happen several times that I overlooked essential quests because I had trivial quest tracking turned off, so those bright yellow exclamation points were invisible. Second, there is a must-have add-on that you will need to install. Can't stress this enough. It's called BTW Quests. And also make sure that you have the Legion module for BTW Quests installed too. This will enable you to know where you are in the quest chains and how much farther you need to go. When you open BTW Quests, you might be in the Dragonflight module by default. If so, back out and go to the Legion module. Load it if you have to. You should have the option to auto-load the Legion module as well. When you're in the Legion module of BTW Quests, click on the pane appropriate to your class and you'll find three other panes that tell you everything you need to know about your quest progress. Note that some classes have more than these three panes, but all classes have these three. The first pane tracks the class campaign. The second tracks the Broken Shore follower quest. The title is always Champion plus the name of the mission table follower. The third pane tracks the final class mount quest. I'll show you one more example just to show you how similar they are across all classes. Open the Legion module. Go to the class pane. Class campaign tab. Broken Shore follower quest line. Class mount quest line. Third and finally, a useful but not necessary add on is World Quests List for tracking world quests when you get to that point in the quest chain. It shows you all the Legion world quests and their objectives. Here's what it looks like. Okay, so how do we get started? The first thing you need to do is open up Legion content in your class order hall if you haven't already done so. I'm going to show you how to do this from both the Horde and Alliance side. We have Saul Goodman here to help us on the Horde side. In Orgrimmar, go to the mission board just outside Gromash Hold in the main town square. Select Broken Shore and click on the Fight the Legion button. If you don't have this option, you probably already opened Legion content. This causes the quest Legion, the Legion Returns to pop up. Accept it and go to the quest turn-in outside the gates of Orgrimmar. Okay, this is really important. This is the first skip situation you need to be aware of in this quest chain. When you turn this quest in at Holgar Stormax, outside the gates of Orgrimmar, if you haven't yet completed the Broken Isles intro quest, you must do that now. As long as you have done it on at least one character, you can skip it and go straight to Dalaran, as I'm doing here on Saul Goodman. Once you're in Dalaran, after completing the intro quest, or the skip, Walk a few steps forward to turn in the quest at Emissary Aldbridge. This is the point at which you receive your Broken Isles Dalaran Hearthstone, although as I said earlier, it's now a toy that you can access on any character from your toy box. Notice that I'm here in Dalaran, kind of looking over my shoulder. This is because on your first trip to Dalaran, following this quest chain, you will invariably be accosted by someone from your class hall urgently seeking your help. Yep, 
right on schedule. From this point on, it's just as simple as following the quest chain. If you get stuck, check BTW quests. If you want to discard extraneous quests, check BTW quests. BTW quests is your friend. Now I'm going to show you the same thing from the Alliance side with the assistance of Derriere. He's parked just inside the gates of Stormwind at the mission board. This unfolds exactly as it did on the Horde side. Select Broken Shore from the mission board and click on the Fight the Legion button. This causes the quest Legion the Legion Returns to pop up. Accept it and go to the quest turn-in at Stormwind Harbor. When you go to the turn-in at Recruiter Lee, either turn in the quest to continue the Broken Isles intro quests or skip them entirely. I will say that the Broken Isles intro quest line is a great scenario and ends with one of the coolest cinematics in World of Warcraft history, hands down. So you definitely want to do it on at least that one character, maybe even more. You will be deposited in Dalaran, as we saw before. Turn in the quest and wait for your class hall representative to assail you. Then just continue the quests as they come to you using BTW quests to track your progress. Here's an alternate scenario you might encounter. But Northurian, you say, I've already opened up Legion and I have no idea where my class hall even is. And I feel your pain. The entrances to the class halls are tucked all around Dalaran, and it's hard to remember where they all are. But fear not, I've prepared an appendix to this video that will show you how to access all 12 class halls. Skip ahead to the timestamp shown here if you've lost your way. Okay, so you're cruising along with your class campaign quest chain. Earlier I talked about several meta quests that are always going to slow you down no matter what class campaign you're working on. Because all the class campaigns share a similar structure, they all include these quests. The first kind of meta quest you'll encounter is a mission table quest that requires you to complete five table missions. Sometimes those are specifically named, sometimes it just says complete five. These will all be marked with a yellow flag as you see here. The irritating thing is that they must be completed in sequence. We can't run two or more missions simultaneously, even if you have enough followers and minions to complete them. And they all have a duration of at least one hour. And I believe that each class campaign has two rounds of these table mission meta quests. Don't quote me on that. One at difficulty level of 38 or so, and one later in the quest chain at a difficulty of 44 or so. This means a good 10 hours of your pursuit of your class mount is taken up by these quests. That's 10 hours real time. So I usually set a timer and either switch to another character or simply log and come back later or tomorrow morning. Thanks for the time gating, Blizz. Another bottleneck you'll encounter is a meta quest to complete 10 world quests. Now you might get stuck here. There's a very important trick here because opening up Legion world quests requires completing a totally separate quest that BTW quest does not track, at least not in the class campaign window. To open up world quests, you must go to Cadgar in the Violet Citadel and complete the quest Uniting the Isles, as shown here. I don't know for sure, but I believe they've removed all the prerequisites for uniting the Isles in post-Legion patches. Once you have world quests opened up, look for the easiest quests to complete. Single target kills, mana saber races, etc. You could probably finish this quest in half an hour or so if you're efficient and lucky with the available quests. There are a few other minor bottlenecks worth mentioning. First, every class campaign requires you to complete two or three dungeons. They can be completed at normal difficulty. If you're completing the quests at level, just ask your friendly neighborhood Amnestre for help. If you're level 70, the content is trivial, but it is a time sink. Second, there are several collection quests that either require crafted or auction house bought components, or that require a crap ton of drops. For instance, 
warlocks have the let it feed quest that requires you to collect 100 demon blood. Even with insta kills at max level, this can take a while. Third, combination of the previous two, collection quests that require you to complete multiple dungeons. Take for example this Demon Hunter quest, a very special kind of fuel that requires you to collect 15 Sovereign Souls. Every dungeon boss drops one of these if you have the quest, and end bosses sometimes drop two. So you'll have to run a handful of dungeons to complete this. Pro tip here. For this type of quest, I use the fastest dungeon possible, which is Maw of Souls in Stormheim. Just fly to Valdistal, and then fly down to the Maw of Souls as shown here. The instance only has three bosses and can be completed in maybe 10 minutes assuming you have a max level character. Reset and repeat. There's one more little quirk that I'd like to talk about. Sometimes when you play this at max level, there are certain quests that bug out if you kill things too quickly. So sometimes you have to resort to special tactics like this. Mage punching for the win. So eventually you will complete the class campaign. At some point you'll be awarded the A Glorious Campaign achievement, as shown here. But you're actually not quite done with the campaign until you complete the quest A Hero's Weapon. Every class has a quest by this name. It requires you to brandish your artifact weapon at a particular spot, like this. Or this. You must have an artifact weapon equipped. Yay! You're done with the class campaign. So what's next? The Broken Shore Follower Quest. This is tracked in the next pane in BTW Quests. Note that it's bookended in BTW Quests by Breaching the Tomb. Now, a caveat here. I've read conflicting things about this. Some say you have to complete the Breaching the Tomb quest line on at least one character. Others suggest that the requirement has been removed so that you only need to complete the quest listed between the bookends. I really hope it's the latter case for you, but I don't really know. To start this quest line, go to Crassus Landing. You should find Cadgar waiting there with a quest for you, like this. If he's not there, you may have to troubleshoot a phasing issue. Pick up the quest Armies of Legion Fall and follow Cadgar as he monologues about the Broken Shore assault. Okay, very important point. This is the other skip situation in this whole process. When you turn in Armies of Legion Fall, you have two options. If you haven't done the Assault on the Broken Shore intro scenario, you must do it now. It takes about half an hour. If you have done it on at least one character, you can skip and go straight to the turn-in at Deliverance Point on the Broken Shore, as shown here. Turn in the quest. But you do not need to pick up the next quest Cadgar gives you. Instead, walk over to Maiev Shadow Song, just a few steps away. She will give you the quest Champions of Legion Fall, no matter what class you are playing. She will give you a new breadcrumb quest to recruit a mission table follower that is unique to each class. There's not much else to say about this step. Once you've followed the quest chain to get your follower, return to Maiev Shadow Song to turn in. Now you're on the home stretch. The final phase is the class mount quest line proper. Once you've turned in the Champions of Legion Fall quest to Maiev Shadow Song, it's not always obvious where to pick up quests that will lead you to the class mount. 
Use the third pane in BTW Quest to identify the quest and wow head to locate it if necessary. But in my experience, it has always been a quest giver flagged with a campaign quest relatively close to Maiev Shadow Song in Deliverance Point, like this monk quest. or this druid quest. Whatever your class, this quest giver will give you a quest that will lead you to your class mount in as few as one quest and as many as seven. Here I have bad news for certain classes. There are some nasty bottlenecks here when you are so close to getting your mount. Two of these stand out. First, for rogues. I alluded to this earlier. You will receive a quest here to infiltrate four enemy capitals to assassinate a mark. Some of these are easier than others because they're in low traffic areas. But for both factions, Horde and Alliance, you must kill an auctioneer in Stormwind or Orgrimmar, respectively. These are high traffic areas. Chances of survival are not good, but you have a good shot if Vanish is on cooldown. Bring a friend who can stealth, another rogue or druid. I'm sure any of the Amnestre would be willing to sacrifice themselves to create a diversion so you can get your class mount. Second, for Warlocks. This meta quest bottleneck is slightly less annoying. Warlocks receive the quest Fell to the Core to collect an overcharged Fell Core from a commander of a Legion Assault on the Broken Isles. The first part of the Legion Assault is not so hard. Participate in an assault when one is active by completing world quests in the zone. You can find Legion Assaults by looking at your Broken Isles map for the icon shown here. The capstone is the tricky part because it requires you to queue for a scenario to complete it. Since Legion is now legacy content, there are reports of people waiting in the queue for hours since very few people are actively doing this content anymore. I actually had no problems with this when I did it recently. Recently, but I did it on a weekend when there's more activity, so your mileage may vary. I was able to complete this entire meta quest in about half an hour. Now, there may be other nasty bottlenecks, but those are the ones that stick out in my memory. When you finally get a mount, you'll be treated to a nice cinematic like this. Or this. So there you have it, your very own class mount. I hope this guide has helped take some of the mystery out of how to acquire these mounts, many of which are still standout mounts. Please feel free to ask me in game or out of game if you have any questions. And don't forget to stay tuned for a little tutorial at the end of this video on how to access your class hall if you forgot. Them. Peace out.